and welcome to our Women in Sports special. I'm your host, Maria Martin. For the next 40 minutes, we will honor some of the trailblazing girls and women in Atlanta sports, paving the way for generations to come. And because we are your home for all things Olympics, we're going to begin quickly with a historic milestone that dubbed Michaela Schifrin the greatest skier of all time. She recently finished the World Cup with a record setting 87th win. It's a record that had previously been held for four decades. She then hit 88 career wins a few days later. Later, so kudos to her. Really, really cool stuff. Flag football is one of the fastest growing sports in America, and the state of Georgia is home to hundreds of girls participating in the sport. The reason behind the rapid rise is thanks in large part to NFL teams all over the country. The Atlanta Falcons, they are among the few pioneering the way to make flag football accessible nationwide. I've met so many young women who have such bright futures ahead of them because they found this sport. And a lot of them realizing that, you know, it doesn't have to stop after high school. It can go on to college. It can be something that they work professionally in. And it's great to see those avenues opened. Flag football. <laughs> making sure that one day every high school in this state has girls flag football offered. It's one of the fastest growing sports in the entire country. Girls flag football in Georgia is here to stay and it's here to make an impact in so many different people. One of the reasons flag football has taken flight at such a rapid rate of acceleration is the involvement from NFL teams around the country. Here in Georgia, the Atlanta Falcons were at the forefront of getting flag football to become a sanctioned high school sport that started as of the 2020-2021 season. The state of Georgia and the Atlanta Falcons is the model. And what's the model? People working together at every level for a common goal and a cause. And what is that? To make sure football is actually truly inclusive. And that's special, but it takes leaders. It takes visionary. It really starts when we were back in 2017 and looked to Florida and saw that they already had girls flag football. It had been up and running for a while and how many girls were given the opportunity to play a sport at the high school level that we didn't have here in Georgia. And we thought to ourselves, what's holding us from starting this here? So we thought, what can we do to at least get this up and, up and running? So we thought, okay, a pilot program, something that shows people there's interest and we can do this. So we went to Gwinnett County, which at the time was the largest county in Georgia with 19 high schools, went to the athletic director, John Ware, and said, we will back you 100%, we'll fund you 100% as long as you can operate it. And he said, no brainer, absolutely. So that was in the spring of 2018 and we got it up and running by fall of 2018. So all 19 high schools were able to have a girls flag football team for that fall. And they thought at first, no one's gonna come out, we're gonna have to take from other sports, we're gonna have like three girls on the team. And they ultimately had to cut people from, from tryouts because they didn't have enough uh, spots for the amount of girls that were coming out. There were hundreds of girls coming out to try the sport and that season alone, we always look back to that and we smile because th what we thought was gonna be so little turned out to be immensely impactful, just absolutely huge for the state of Georgia and it grew from wildfire there. In the infancy of the Falcons wanting to get involved with flag football, it really didn't take long to realize that the interest was abundant. We put some feelers out to a couple of high schools. We put feelers out to a couple of athletes that we knew and said, if this was provided to you, would you be interested? And nine times out of 10, the answer was yes, because it goes back to there was only powder puff. Powder puff or I am football. And I think a lot of us can resonate with powder puff because it was that one time a year we got to strap on a football flag belt and go out there on the field and you know be like the guys. And just that rush of getting to play football, it's something that we only got to have one time. And these girls thinking, I want to feel that again. I want to be out there. I want to show people that I can play just as well as the boys. We thought if you give them an outlet, they're going to come. If you build it, they will come. So we definitely knew there was an interest. So there was, there's always going to be a little bit of uncertainty when you go into something brand new but what came out of it, we couldn't be happier. Some of the Falcons employees behind getting flag football off the ground in Georgia have put in the work firsthand, listening to the stories of why this sport has already had such a large impact. If you ask anyone in our department who have seen, who have seen this firsthand unfold, we have been moved to tears more than we can count. And we're, we're happy to say that because you can really see the impact firsthand, I'd say. One of the moments that was extremely impactful for me and for our team, we actually went out to Montana and we were able to pilot three high schools. So for Montana, that's that's huge considering the state. And we talked to one of the girls. She was a little bit shy and you know a little bit reserved to share her story. But to sum it up, she basically told us girls flag football saved her life. And that was it. And we we knew that this sport is so much bigger than just an opportunity. It's 
it's changing lives. And it, it truly wasn't to feel that and to hear that and to get to see her on the field playing with her teammates, having that camaraderie, and knowing that the suicide rate in Montana is astronomically high, just to hear her say that, there wasn't a dry eye in that building. It still isn't when we talk about it. It's just immensely powerful to see what this sport can do. Flag football is a championship varsity sport in the state of Georgia, which also allows girls to play inside Mercedes-Benz Stadium. It is the exact same field that the Atlanta Falcons play on. <laughs> It never gets old when you see someone run out of the tunnel or first step into the building and they just have that moment where they're taken aback and they're speechless. You, you come in here every single day and it kind of fades on you, but to see someone have that look in their eye of, I am in the same building that Kyle Pitts has played in or Matt Ryan has played in or Michael Vick, it's incredible to see the weight that it holds, especially if they are a Falcons fan because they can't they can't believe it. It's so real to them that they're having an opportunity that most people won't have in their lifetime. Georgia became the fifth state in the country to sanction girls flag football as an official high school sport. Since then, both California and New York have done the same thing. California's state governing body approved the sanctioning with a unanimous 140 to zero vote. Now other states and other NFL teams are uh, having it grow in their areas as well because they've seen how much girls love it and the passion behind it and the intent we want to see it in every state. I think that's definitely the goal of not only us, but the entire NFL. I mean, there's motions to move it in every single state right now. Every single club is working on something to either pilot or get it up and running or already have it sanctioned and keep growing it. It's very important, not just to us, but also to the NFL, the world, that we really give these athletes an opportunity and give them a stage. I think a great way to look at that is the most recent Super Bowl commercial. I mean, when was the last time we had a halftime commercial that featured women but featured girls flag football and not just the United States, it featured the quarterback from Mexico. That was just astonishing. So our goal is just to give everyone this opportunity, no matter if they're here in Atlanta or they're out in Nevada or they're all the way up in North Dakota, we want them to have the opportunity to play this sport. This also goes beyond high school. Colleges take part in playing at Mercedes-Benz Stadium for the Women's League Finals every year. It has allowed young ladies to receive scholarships on the spot to go play flag football in college. So every year we actually host the annual Women's Flag Finals, which is in conjunction with the NAIA. It's where all their teams can come to Mercedes-Benz Stadium and they actually have their collegiate championship. So while we host that, we also host a showcase, and that's where high school athletes from all around Georgia and Alabama for free can sign up to come and showcase their talents to recruiting colleges. And we've done this for the past two years. The first year, we had roughly about 40 scholarships given on site. The second year, we had 60. So it's just fantastic to see the girls that come here just to showcase what they've got and then walk away with an opportunity to play at the next level. And we followed some of these athletes on their stories when they started out of high school here they went to the showcase and we actually had a young girl who was actually committed to go to UGA and do her schooling there. She got an offer at this showcase and flipped everything to go and play and start a flag football team with Reinhardt University, one that just started a girls flag football team. So it's really impactful to see that these girls are having this opportunity. They're getting scholarships. They're getting things that weren't even available two, three years ago just from having an event here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I'm standing amongst a group of winners, serious. We were down 6 nothing almost the entire game. We had drop balls, bad snaps, bad blocking. We didn't pull a flag until the second damn half. You will fight through this, point blank, period. And if you're ever at the Benz for a sporting event or a concert, go check out the girls' flag football wall. It's the perfect showcase of history in the making and a display of football is for everyone. In May of 2022, we unveiled a gorgeous wall here in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. It's right next to our boys' tackle football wall, and it's the girls' flag football wall. And it rivals, if not at times, looks better than the boys' wall, and it showcases Every single school in Georgia that has girls flag football, it showcases the NAIA Women's Flag Final Championship and really showcases our efforts of the past four or five years. And every single time I see it, it does make me emotional because a lot of work went into that, a lot of time, energy and effort, not only of our department, but a ton of people in this organization. And just to see when we finally were able to unveil it and the three minutes of confetti that followed, it was a moment that I will remember for the rest of my life. I absolutely could be moved to tears by that because you could see just the historical moment of knowing that girls flag football in Georgia is here to stay 
and it's here to make an impact in so many different people and that wall just showcases that. Oh, and the future of flag football is so bright. Now, the coolest part about what the Falcons are helping build with flag football is those opportunities that it's giving these young girls beyond high school. You heard Danielle talking about some of those scholarship opportunities girls have been given at Mercedes Benz Stadium. So I actually caught up with one of those young ladies to talk about how her future actually changed thanks to a growing game. Because it's just as fun. It's just as exciting. Um, it's just as tough and rough. Flag football continues to grow in the state of Georgia thanks to athletes like Carson Padgett. People think that it's a non-contact sport because I that might technically be what it's called, but it's definitely not. I leave practice, I leave games with bruises all over my legs, all over my arms. It's just, it's the same amount of like pressure that's on you too. It's, it's this, they should be equal because they are. I mean, they're both played pretty much the same except with flags instead of tackling. But we still fall over. We still like hit girls. Like our blockers still like prevent the sack from the quarterback. Like it's it's football. And I love football. I love watching the guys play football. But I just wish that I could see, you know, people like me, girls playing football. And I before we had this in high school. I had never seen it. I hadn't heard about it. I and I just wish that I had that opportunity earlier. She didn't start playing flag football until she was a sophomore in high school after playing soccer most of her life. Once my mom just was like, hey, like you should go try out because, you know, I would would have loved to have that opportunity when I was a kid. And I was like, you know, what? that sounds like a great idea. So I went and tried out and I absolutely loved it. It was amazing. And um, it kind of grew even further with my senior year because we had a new coach and he is just amazing and he really like helped us through it. We won regionals. After that, Carson found out she could try out for a scholarship to keep playing in college. My plan was always to go to KSU. My plan was to stay at home and commute to KSU, save money. And when I figured out, oh, hey, because my coach let me know there's prospect day and I could go play for a college. I, I was so intrigued and I, it just really hit me like, oh, this can be like a thing. Like I can go and do this for basically a career for the next four years. And I was really excited and I, yeah, I just knew immediately that I had to go try. And it paid off. She's now a freshman playing for Reinhardt University. My entire team, we all um, received uh, at least partial scholarship to go here. I know that a lot of them would have never planned on going to Reinhardt. And I have a few friends um, from my high school days, like on the other teams, who got multiple offers from multiple different schools. And it's just so cool to see that, like, not only is it a shared experience, but it's also such an exciting one that I just can't wait to hear about it from like other girls. Like if my daughter were to do that and was like, mom, like I can go play football and I can get money to go to school there. And I was like, that's amazing. Like I can't, it's just such a great feeling that that could be even further. Padgett says she tells everyone she meets that she plays flag football, even if the reaction isn't always the best. Half of them don't know what it is. Um, another half say, oh, yeah, I could go play and I could beat everybody. Like, I'd beat all the girls. Like, let me just let, let me go play. I'm like, mm, no, <laughs> but it's just and they get really cocky for some reason. Yeah. And yeah, they just I don't know. It's not all of them are like that. Some of them are very supportive. I'm like, oh, yeah, like I want to go watch your games. Like, that's so cool. And thinking they could just do it easily. But they don't believe that it's as intense as football. They, like I said, they think it's a non-contact sport when it definitely has contact. So yeah, they just either think that they can go and try out and be better than us after we've been training for so many years or don't believe me. It's, yeah, it's kind of heartbreaking really because it's these guys like in my high school, like when I went to go commit, um, we had like a day where you would sign and a lot of the guys in the audience were like, flag football? Like she's committing for flag football? Really? And I was like, yep, it's happening guys, like believe it. 
Those reactions are why she wants younger girls to keep getting involved with the growing sport. They can do it. That it's not like this inattainable dream. Because I know once I realized that it could happen, I was over the moon. And I just want everybody to know that it can happen. And it happened to me. So if you want it, you have to go and take it for yourself. Because if you if you just sit back, if anything, it's going to be given to a guy. You know, like the guys will start taking over again, and it'll just be like. So we have to we have to go and take what we can get, as it, the opportunities are being given to us. Carson Paget is just at the beginning of her college career, but she wants to see flag football continue to evolve for the next generations. It continues to grow. I just really hope that more it'll become more popular and more normalized because when I tell people, oh yeah, I play for Reinhardt, and they're like, oh, like a rec team. And I'm like, no, I play for the school, like the private NAIA school team. And they're like, I didn't even realize that it exists, or some of them don't even know that it actually like exists. They're like, what's flag football? And I was like, oh, it's just football, but you pull flag instead of tackle, pretty much. And there's less people on the field. And they're really intrigued by it, too. And then, like, some of the girls that I talked to, they're like, oh, that sounds really cool. Like, I wish we had that when I was in high school. I was like, yeah, that's kind of the point. I want it to be very, like, accessible and normalized in high school areas and then into the college arena, I just hope that it keeps continuing to grow. Together. You look good, you look good, you look good. You look good. Carson is the sweetest. We wish her the best of luck. Now, when you look around NFL franchises, there are women present in every department on and off the field, but that hasn't always been the case. The number of women in the league is growing, and one of the women paving the way is Sarah Hogan. Sarah has been with the Falcons since 2015 and is now the assistant director of coaching operations. She and I sat down to discuss her role with the organization and what the future actually holds for women in the NFL. Sarah, I'm so excited that you're in studio with me. Thank you so much for having me. For a lot of people that don't know, you and I are actually friends because we've got some common ground. We're both coaches' wives, so That's that right. is really, really exciting. We'll get into that a little bit. But um, you've had such a long journey to get to where you are today. Take me back to college, and when you're just starting to figure out what you want to do, what was the decision behind what you majored in, and take it from there. Yeah, so I came from, uh, my, my dad is a college football coach, so I kind of always had that background. And when I got to James Madison in Virginia, um, it was just an unspoken thing that I'd go work in the football office. Yeah. So started off there, never really expected to get into sports. It really wasn't a thing back in the day in 2000 when I was a freshman. But um, I worked for the football office for four years and then ended up majoring in sports management and was lucky enough to uh, do my summer internships with the New York Jets. And then just kind of got into it right out of college. Um, I went to grad school actually here in Atlanta. Uh, I worked at Georgia Tech and I was a, uh, went to grad school at Georgia State and then fell into it um, at Northeastern University working for uh, the coach that I worked for in college. And then after that, uh, we had dropped our football program at Northeastern and Georgia State started their program and got the director of football operations uh, job there and then I ended up with the Falcons. So it was a it was a long journey of about 12 years, but it seems like it went by very quickly. As a coach's kid, obviously, you're always around football. It's something that you're infiltrated in. Kind of like you said, it's kind of a given that you'll be around the sport. But what did you exactly think that you wanted to do or you just kind of didn't know? Well, I think back in the day, really, at that time, there weren't a whole lot of females that worked in football. I yeah. mean, really, you saw athletic trainers and uh, that's about it, it, you know, for females that were had opportunities. So when I got into the football office, that's where I kind of started learning that there was so much that women could do um, with just helping the coaches, helping in the football office, helping with recruiting weekends and operations, that that's what, you know, my passion really started with that. And just kind of working my way up through operations and campus recreation. I uh, worked at the University of Maryland and did college athletics there. So that really turned into me just loving the operations aspect and realizing how I could be a support person for coaches and players um, in football because, you know, you know, having that knowledge and just kind of knowing how to treat those guys and how they act and how they need support. What's been the biggest challenge for you? I mean, you're one of the pioneers. You're one of the few that got into football really early. What's been the biggest challenge? Uh, I would say uh, I've been very lucky where I've had some head coaches that are 
have been extremely pro progressive. Uh, yeah. They've challenged me. They've put a lot into me. Where, you know, work where you know they want to develop me. Uh, challenges, I would say, just kind of like finding my niche with the different staffs. I had two different head coach coaches at Georgia State. I've had two different head coaches at the Falcons. Yeah. So I think in a good way, I'm being challenged more and more each year to take on a bigger role and to do more things, and even just to work with different staffs. Like this year, we brought in six new coaches and. That's always a great challenge I look forward to every year just because it's a natural thing that happens in our business. And you have had a title change since you've been with the Atlanta Falcons. You joined in 2015, so yeah. things have evolved since then for you. Tell me about your role now, what it means, and what a day-to-day -day looks like for Sarah. So it's a lot of um, hard things that you really can't plan out sometimes, but <laughs> I do the best that I can to make sure that if somewhere in our organization needs help from the coaching staff or the head coach or even just the team in general with their schedule, they'll come to me and I'll try to figure out ways to make it all work. And that's really kind of trying to make it seamless so that uh, our side of the business works well with the rest of the business. And um, it really is, it's a challenge every day and you can't predict what's gonna happen. And I love collaborating with all the different people in our building, from David Bassetti to Laura Isley and just yeah. everybody, how we work together. Um, it's an incredible team and I'm really lucky. And um, you know, I look forward to that challenge every day. Going back to you being a woman in the NFL, it's really fun because I think over the years you've seen it change. And when you look around, there's more and more women represented in the league, which is so fantastic. When you look around, when you're at the combine, when you're at the draft in the past, and you see so many different women starting to come oh, yeah. into the league, what is that like for you? It is such a big change. I mean, even from when I went to the combine for the first time four years ago, yeah. we had the women's forum, the NFL women's forum. And, you know, we went from having, uh, I would say, like, 30 women in the room to then this past year, we may have had close to 75 in the room. Wow. And they were from all different teams, all different departments, analytics, equipment, training staff, um, and not just operations, not just coaching. So I think a lot of teams are opening their eyes and they're, or they're opening opportunities for women's, women in different aspects of the building. And I think in the beginning, there was a big push for women to, you know, oh, let's get women in coaching, which has grown tremendously. And someone like Callie at the Browns, like she's been such an inspiration. Yeah. Where there's also people like me or someone like in equipment who don't necessarily want to coach, but there's more opportunities in operations with the different staffs in the building. But you understand how coaching works, obviously. You're married to a high school coach yeah. and then your dad obviously coached football. Um, you understand that women can know football as well, I think. I think it's going to be super interesting to hear your perspective about why you believe women could be coaches in the NFL. Oh, absolutely. And I think just talking about the growth of flag football, like I we oh, yeah. hosted the flag football championship at our, at our facility uh, in December. And I will never forget, I walked in to go watch one of the games and I got so emotional thinking what my life could have been like if I had the opportunity wow. to play when I was that age. So I think that, yes, women do have the opportunity to be able to be coaches and especially with them being able to play flag football now that their understanding of the game is just going to keep growing. And so I think, you know, with that and with, you know, professional leagues that and even with the Bill Walsh internships that we, we do every year, twice a year, that we're giving women the opportunity to come in and work with the NFL and work with the coaches and players directly. It's so cool. The flag yeah. football stories that I've oh, been able it. to hear through the Falcons too, yeah. them being really a leader and getting flag football off and running in Georgia Absolutely. and then surrounding surrounding states as well has been super awesome to watch. Uh, you brought up flag football. <laughs> What's your favorite part about watching it? Personally, I just think watching watching how they know the game, yeah. it's so impressive to me. They honestly probably know more than I do about it. And <laughs> I, I did love learning the rules because there were so many different, like the score, you know, the, the downs and how, like how many points you can score yeah, and all that. Different. Thought it was really cool and just, just their enthusiasm. And uh, it was so exciting to like watch all the parents and the coaches and it really is, it's such an awesome sport. I mean, for men and for women, so. I'm happy to see the growth of that, especially in Georgia. And shout out to Amanda Dinkle and our whole CR staff, Danielle Renner, and they've just done such a good job. Such a terrific job. It's really, really cool. And I think it's only going to get more explosive from here and more yeah. popular. There are so many young girls that are I very interested in it. And now they can play in college, too, yes. which is really cool. Um, back to you for a second, because like I had said earlier, your role has evolved with the Falcons. Tell me how it has from the time you got here in 2015 to where you are now under Arthur Smith. So when I came in, I was the director of football operations at Georgia State, yeah. and I was hired initially to be in the scouting department for the Falcons. So I was the uh, I was a coordinator of scouting, and helped helped the GM and the, mostly the assistant GM, and did all the travel for the scouts. And I learned a ton about just the building and how it worked in the scouting realm. And then 
um, moved over to coaching uh, that je following uh, January of 16 to help the coaching staff. And that's really where I learned like how an NFL coaching staff team the whole year looks like. Mm. And it, it took, I would say, three or four years for me to really get the hang of what a typical year looks like. And it was, it was an amazing experience, you know, the growth that I, I went through. And then having the new staff come in a couple years ago, I felt really confident in being able to, you know, onboard them and kind of be a resource for my head coach. Even Coach Smith is, you know, he knew everything and you know, knew how to do everything. But it was nice to have that background of how, you know, I could – I could be a resource for him at the Falcons, so it's been nice to be able to really evolve with um, the duties and the responsibilities from when I first got there till till now. There's a lot of women in the Falcons organization. When you look around, if you have younger women coming to you and asking, "How can I get involved? How can I be in the office? What do I need to do?" What's your advice? I do talk to a lot of women that are upcoming in the profession, whether that be in college or just out of college or having worked a couple years and trying to move up and. Number one piece of advice I give them is just to kind of like put themselves out there, whether it be um, if you're working at a specific company, go volunteer with other parts of the company. Try to take on and learn as much as you can where you are now. Yeah. Or say you, work, you are in Atlanta and you're working at a high school in high school athletics. Well, see if you can find you know events to go volunteer at, and st at, things like that that can just help build your resume. And then also just meet as many people as you can within the industry and do the best job that you can so that you know, you may you never know who you're impressing when you're doing that. Game day for the NFL is really extensive for everyone involved. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what your role is on the field, but every time I see you on game day, it's hi, gotta go, bye. <laughs> Tell everybody what your game day is like. Game day, yeah, game day is a little wacky. I try to <laughs> I try my best to uh, minimize the distractions for the coaches and the players, mostly yeah. the coaches in the begin during pregame. So uh, I'll take care of like any guests that they have coming or if their families are having any issues getting into the stadium or anything like that. So I'm running around caring for the 29 coaches' wives and whatnot or any guests that the head coach may have. And um, and then once that, that we clear the field for warm-ups, um, I'll work with um, the coaches on the bench doing the Microsoft Surface tablets, just making sure they get to the right people and coaches and if there's any problems and this year I was the game day tech liaison for the NFL for the Falcons so I did a report cool. every after every game and just you know talked about all the tech if there was any issues and stuff so I mean it was definitely another another challenge that I got to experience this year that I never got to do before so I got to sit in on a very cool game day operations meeting at the combine and just again just learn just trying to be a sponge and continue to learn what do you feel like the future for women is in the NFL I think there's a big a big future for it as far as I as far as coaching goes I think that is on a it seems like it's been on a faster track which is amazing yeah the, the like I spoke about before the Bill Walsh um, diversity internship yeah there's been I know for us in the building for the last like six years I would say we've had a couple females in a year where they have propelled into a NFL coaching job. Wow. So a lot of these women that you are seeing have been in our building. And I think that the opportunities that the NFL Women's Forum is providing, where they are taking women from different aspects of the business, video, equipment, everything, you'll see more women starting to inf infiltrate and they're doing a better job in college as well, where they're starting to build their pipelines and their uh, re repertoire to be start working in the NFL with their college experiences, where when I was in college, there was zero. And when I was a DFO in college, there was four. Wow. And now almost every, I would say every college staff in America probably has a recruiting operations and a, a director or assistant director of ops that are, that's a female. And it's amazing that's to really, watch, really to see cool. how, it's, how far it's come along. So it speaks to the future of where things are going it's with very women cool. in football, which is and super it's important. awesome. It is very important. You know how it is. I appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you for having me. Sarah is literally one of the brightest women I know. I'm so glad she was able to talk to us for this special. The women who are married to coaches are an essential part of the day-to-day -day coaching grind. You heard a little bit about it there. When it comes to head coaches' wives, though, they have so many responsibilities. Falcons head coach Arthur Smith's wife, Allison, she has been with him long before he ever took a head coaching job in Atlanta, and their journey to get here has certainly been a wild one. 
I love this. I feel like there's just so many things about you guys that people don't really know. And like, there's so many cool, like intricate things to your family. And, um, you know, I can talk, this is like his worst nightmare is like to give me a microphone. Like he, (laughs) he likes to say greatest asset, greatest liability, like put me in the cocktail room crowd, you know, like I can go worker room. I can talk to everybody, but he is terrified about what's going to come out of my mouth. It's funny because every year when the head coach would get fired, we'd be like, Oh God, they're going to clean house. You know, (laughs) And so my friends were just like, luckily I had a lot of, um, being my husband and I are both from Memphis. I had a lot of friends in Nashville and had obviously created some more friends while I was there. And they knew every time when it was like Black Monday, I was like, they knew what it was and they knew and they're like, oh God, are you okay? Are we going to go get margaritas? So you were in local news. Have you ever tried to explain to Arthur like, hey, this was my past life. And I mean, he's got to deal with media every day. Well, he, he actually, he, I know he, sometimes he comes off short in press conferences, but I think he's actually very nice and he always answers everybody's question. There is pressure, but do you feel more pressure because there's teams Um, winning all all over the place? He put so much pressure on himself. I don't think it's possible to put more pressure. I mean, we have the kindest owner. Um, I can't say enough good things about Arthur Blank and all my Arthur wants to do for that Arthur is get him a, a Super Bowl. You know, like get yeah. that Lombardi trophy for him. One of the secret weapons for athletes has always been their personal trainers. Sports performance training has exploded to new heights. It is an essential tool to help athletes improve their craft during season and during the off season. Now, there aren't many women owned and operated sports training facilities, but there is one here in Metro Atlanta. Meet Lily Abdelmalik, paving the way with her star studded clientele in Marietta and also the proven success in her training. I always tell people I feel like God put me in a corner. It's like, okay, you could either stop or you could just make this right turn and keep going. So then I'd make that right turn. And it happened a couple times throughout my career into this. Sports performance training. I like that touch and go. There is plenty of it all over the country. It's an essential tool to help athletes of all ages and levels improve their craft. What makes DSA training or Dynamics Speed and Agility Training in Marietta unique is that it's owned and led by a female trainer. I don't know if I purposely demand respect when I get into the room, but that's kind of how it ends up, you know, when I step into the room because we have work to do. Lily Abdomalik's journey from trainer to owning her own training facility started with an internship back in 2005. So make sure like you're not here turning and then crossing. Everything's all one motion. So you're here, open, okay? Try it. I started with an internship back in 2005 um, with a great Olympic track coach named Lauren Seagrave. Um, And then I transitioned into working with another um, company called XPE Sports, which is down in Florida. Learned a lot about combine training. It pretty much came easy. I know it sounds crazy, but I guess that's why it was just meant to be. Nice and controlled. Cross, open. There you go, good work. One more. The clientele at DSA is wide ranging and star studded. From working with, you know, elite kids, and I'm saying like Olympic fencers, to NBA players such as Jalen Brown or Anthony Edwards, to some of the best, you know, football players, all pros. It's been amazing, it's been a ride. Um, Still always learning from them and just kind of enjoying it day by day. Guys like Falcons cornerback Casey Hayward, Twins infielder Kyle Farmer, former Falcon Mike Davis, former Atlanta Brave Jason Hayward, and the list goes on. She's currently even helping projected first round draft pick Keon White for the upcoming 2023 NFL draft. I was blessed to be working out with some amazing athletes that trusted me. And I think over the years, it it became like a flow. It's very much word of mouth. So the guys talk amongst each other as to where they go to train. Um, And then when they come in to, you know, meet me and, and work out with me, you know, it just works out and they stay. There are plenty of challenges that come with being a woman leading the training for male exclusive professional sports. One, two, three, get out of there. Good. Last one, bye. It's a never ending sense of proving yourself in this business. And not just to say it's for me or women, it's for men too. Um, But 
I think it becomes a little more challenging because at times, no matter how many accomplishments have been made, there's still a sense of I'm still not taken seriously. You see how he keeps his chest facing the wall the whole time? So sometimes you get out and then your whole upper body turns and faces this way. Okay. I want you to think about keeping that chest facing this wall the whole time. A lot of people have said, well, a woman can't train a football player because she's never trained or played football. But I'm not working with them to play football in a sense. I'm not telling them how to play football or what the schemes are in a sense. Think all one motion because the clock is going to start off your first motion. I'm training you to move to the best of your right, ability, so to move as efficiently as you can. So how exactly have the clients learned to trust Lily at her craft? There's a sense of family, so it's like brotherly, sisterly love, but I there's also that aspect of leader, teacher. Um, owner, you know, and I think that's where the respect comes in. One, two, three, four, five, six, get out of there. Good work. And all it takes is a morning or afternoon at DSA to understand that what Lily and her team have built is something that stands out among a competitive field of sports training facilities. It's not that any other sports performance business trains, you know, better or worse than us. Um, I think it's just the culture we have built here. Um, I think it's the family that we have, the sense of care um, that we have for each individual athlete. I, I think they see it and they appreciate it and it goes far beyond just training. It's been amazing and I know it's not stopping anytime soon. It certainly isn't. Lily's getting ready to start a YouTube channel, and every time I walk into that gym, there is somebody new walking in that door. All right, the stories that you just heard in this special are some of our favorite women in sports in the Atlanta metro area, but I wanted to hear some of yours. So I put a tweet out asking people who their favorite female athlete is of all time, and I got so many responses. You name it. Serena Williams, Venus Williams, Billie Jean King. I even asked around the newsroom, and the responses were so various, but for me personally, Pat Summit is mine. When I was a little kid, I was obsessed with the Lady Volunteers. Pat Summit, the late great head coach of the Lady Vols, she had 31 consecutive NCAA tournament appearances and won eight of those with some of my childhood heroes. I'm talking Shamika Holsquaw, Candace Parker, which a lot of people named as well, Tamika Ketchings, Kara Lawson. It was literally my dream to be a Tennessee volunteer. That didn't work out for me, so I'm going to talk about sports for a living instead. But People have no idea the impact that women athletes have on young girls watching, maybe even some of you guys at home. Truly, this has touched me in ways that I can't describe. It's so cool to listen to you guys. Give your female athletes, make sure you find me on social media and do that as well. Thank you so much for watching our Women in Sports special here on 11 Alive Plus as we continue to celebrate Women's History Month. Have a great rest of your day, everybody.